It's the program, the, the Standing on God on the Rock. And I'm Bishop Basil Edwards again, your host. I am really, really extremely happy. Um, in the month of February, I'm, I'm so excited because this is my month. This is my birthday month. Two days away from now, which you will get this information at least Sunday. So by, by Friday, I will be 55 years of age. And the Saturday, Sunday, that will look like about maybe about two days after my birthday. But let me say this to you. I'm really extremely happy to, to God Almighty to allowing me to see 55, my 55 birthday. 55 to me is, a, is, 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 a, is a, a, an excellent number for me because many, many people did not make 55 years of age. And of course, I'm looking young and handsome. I have a wonderful, beautiful wife who look almost just like me. I'm not for sale. I'm not for hire by no women. I have one wife and the same woman I'm married to for well, my 31 years, Boxing Day gone. And I really want to thank God for keeping us together. Yes, we have our ups, our downs. Like any other marriages, we have our challenges, but our challenges never drive us to a place where we feel like leave, leaving each other. The older we go, the more caring and loving we seem to be to each other. I want to thank God for her in a very special way. She was here the last time with me, but she's not here today. So I'm hoping that we can have some more session with her once she's free. And may God bless my wife, my two children, Deborah and Desiree, and my three grandchildren, um, Gabriel, Michael, and Emmanuel. And I just want to thank God for them. And the and entire church, the ministers, Paul, his wife, Fiona, Evangelist, his family, and all the brethren from the church on the rock, may the Lord bless you. And today, I'm here to share with you, all my viewers, all my friends, all my partners, those who would have been financially supporting us, I really want to thank you. Right? So let me get on to business with us now. I, I want to thank God for us in a very special way because our concern in Trinidad and Tobago, why? so many murders. Our government are trying their best to see how best they can um, actually steer this thing, how they can help by not allowing our country to have so many murderers. But what we don't understand is that murder or murderers, the spirit of murderer is really connected to idolatry. And I will tell you why I say that. Idolatry is a spirit that is connected to demons. What we have in our country of Trinidad and Tobago, if you study our country very, very serious, you will understand as you go from east, west, north, south, Trinidad or Tobago, you see people erect statues. These statues are not literal statues as you may think. Even though the, the outward appearance may look like statues, what is behind these statues is demon spirits. And the more statues we have, whether it's in our home, on the street, in the schools, or in the, our office, whatever, whether it's in our prime minister office or whatever office they try to put this statue, whether it's by, by, by just by accident or willfully, as long as a statue is there and it's been worshipped as an idol, it is idolatry. And what idolatry do, it open up doors for murderers to murder people. Because what the spirit of idolatry do, it really engage demon spirit. And demon spirit are engaged by the spirit of idolatry. And because of that, these demon spirit are only thirsty for blood. Do you hear me? They are only thirsty for blood. So anywhere in our country that you go and you see statues erect and you tell yourself and you just ignore it as a Christian, make sure 
that you allow the blood of Jesus and cover yourself because some of these statues, what is behind them is demon spirit. And these demon spirits are controlled by the devil. We often say that when Jesus spoke of these two men who were possessed by devil, it was really they were possessed by demon spirit. Devil, the word title, the word devil, is really ascribed to Satan and him only. Demons are controlled by Satan or the devil. So what is happening now? Our government cannot help this situation. Are you hearing me? Our um, politicians cannot help this situation. Those who are living anyhow life will not be able to help this situation. So if we the Christians are looking for the government to help in this situation, they need us the Christians to help in this situation whereby we can pray, seek the face of God so these idols can be destroyed and mash up and done away with. Are you hearing me today? The more idols that are erected in our country or the more idols that people plant in different locations of our country, it will create more chaos in our country. Demons that are, 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 are actually released by Satan to carry out their mandate. For the Bible tells us in, in John 10, 10, for the enemy come but for the steal, to kill, and to destroy. So what we have in our schools, when they say no prayers in our school, or no religious, uh, um, um, nothing religious should take place in the school, and they ray or they put so many different idols in the classroom, or some of them wear it around their necks. They have it on their body as gods. These are demons. And some people are not aware it is really attached to demons because they tell themselves, no, that's okay. So I want you to understand very clearly. As Christians, we ought not to partake in any idol worship. Any idol worship. Those who are partaking in idol worship and they are giving you food. Paul said, you must not eat from them. Because he said, if you know it's idol, they are often turned to, which is demons, but and you eat, then you know what will be the consequences. My thoughts is in Exodus chapter 22. The Bible tells us very carefully that the children of Israel, as they came out of Egypt, they wandered in the wilderness for about 40 years. But what happened? Between that 40 years, Moses would have had in dialect with God, and there are times where God will tell him, come up unto him. But on this particular time, in Exodus 32, God tell Moses, come up to Mount Sinai, and what you shall do, as you come up, O Mount Horeb, when you come up, I am about to give you the Torah, the, the, the five books, or the five books that represent the laws. But within those five books, one of the things that God was able to do, in short words, is the Ten Commandments. He was going to write it on a stone and give it to Moses. So Moses was before God 40 days. While he was before God 40 days, the people went to Aaron and said, this Moses that are supposed to lead us, we don't know what become of him. So here what's going to happen. We want God's idolatry. We want God's that can carry off from point A to point B. And Aaron was in charge of them. And the Bible said, Aaron, tell them take the, gear, the airing off. Whatever they have as gold, take it off. And the Bible said, Aaron fashioned a golden calf. So what the children of Israel were doing, looking for something to worship. And as the golden calf, sorry, was erected, the worst form of idolatry was practiced. They begin to strip themselves naked. Dance as they offer praise unto demons or the devil. 
as they offer praise unto demons or the devil, God see their idolatry. God see that they was not willing to worship him. And as a result of that, sorry, God said to Moses, go down quick Moses before I consume them, but in a moment. Idolatry will move God to act swiftly and judgment is surety. Not a judgment of life or of rewards. It's a judgment of condemnation. A judgment of destroying who the perpetrators are. Who the victims are. And Moses was angry. Not even angry, but Moses began to bargain with God. Because God told him he's going to kill them. And Moses, Moses was bargaining with God because he don't know, he don't see what God see. And that's what I love about God. When God gave us warning, it's because God is a distance away from us. See, he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. And most of the time when God gives us specific direction or order, we need to follow it. So what Moses did after speaking with God, he said, what the Egyptian going to say? What the people going to say? You bring them in the wilderness to kill them. God said, you could say what you want. You better go down quick. Let me kill them because of my people. And Moses did not know what was happening, but Aaron was halfway the hill waiting on the Moses. And what I like about it, Aaron when Moses meet Aaron at the place where he was, and they decide to come down the hill, Moses, Aaron said to Moses, I'm hearing some sort of display, or I'm hearing some kind of action as though the camp has been overrun by the enemy. And Moses said, no, that is not the noise of the camp is overrun. But that is the noise of, of playing or having fun. But let me use it in our, in our, in our local term, canavar. Back an hour. Are you hearing me, somebody? It was carnival. Back an hour they was getting on with. In the highest level of idolatry. And we got to be careful in Trinidad and Tobago because we are talking about our national steel pad. And we are talking about back an hour and carnival and idolatry. We have some of the most. Women, oh, some of the most intelligent women and men that you will never believe that, will, that they will display themselves in such ridiculous way. Some of them who are in banks and working in very high office. When you see them on that day, they is like they are naked and behaving as though they're out of their head and they're crazy. And we are talking about this is our heritage. It may be your heritage, but it's not my heritage because my heritage is in God. Anything has to do with bacchanal and, and carnival and all sort of indecency is of devils and demons. I have no apology for it. It could be our national pan. Our national pan can give us sweet music. I was in an anniversary just not too far from here, just down the road, impact to impact ministry. And I heard the instrument, the national pan, played a sweet melody. And the song was so wonderful played. And you are telling me the same pan that we have that can play such beautiful song for Jesus. It has been used as a level of idolatry on our five, six, seven, eight, nine days or 20 something days of bacchanal in our country. If you ask our government to sponsor the Christian fraternities, so we can spread the street of Trinidad and Tobago and share God with them. They always have some kind of argument. Somebody who brighter than God feel that it's a waste of money. But don't you know that our country is more safe? It becomes more safe because what happened? Prayer, worship, and adoration bring our country to a stabilization. Can't do as you want because forces of darkness can overrun light. In John 8 and verse 12 said, Jesus said, if you follow me, you will not walk in darkness, 
but you will walk in light and you will have life. So when Moses and Aaron was coming down from the hill, Moses see a golden calf. And the people were saying, these are the gods that bring us out of Egypt. And they were worshipping it. The worst form of idolatry has taken place because they strip themselves and they begin to play. Men could have grabbed any woman and sexually perversion would have taken place because they are drunk. And they are so taken up with the spirit of idolatry that demons have them controlling them. What Moses had to do is destroy the golden calf. And in destroying the golden calf, he had to, gain, he had to place the calf into, into fire, consume it, and then put whatever they, what was left in water and give them to drink for the cleansing of their sin. Are you hearing me somebody today? There are many people today who are in idolatry. You have a statue in your house and you erect it and you're worshipping it. It's idolatry. You're worshipping demon. You have a ring on your hand that, that portray certain idol. You are worshipping demons. So demons are behind that ring or whatever you may have. Whatever we have today as worship become the object, object um, object of our lives. Worship become those objects. Whatever the objects are. Whatever you set up as statues. I'm sorry that the wood don't want to come up no more because I'm, I'm having that problem in, I don't know, because I'm not sure if it's the light or the air condition, but I'm having that, that, that fervor. It's not as I want it to be. And I want to say to us today, if worship is not a sin to God, but it's a sin to the devil. What we will have in our country is murders that cannot serve and will not stop. Trinidad and Tobago need to stop idolatry or worshiping of idols. Whatever form of idols you worship, it does not represent almighty God, but it represents demons. We need to stop worshipping idols, which is still idolatry. You worship your wife, it's an idol. You worship your car, it's an idol. You worship your house, it's an idol. Whatever you erect as a means of worship, it's an idol. And demons is enrolled behind it, especially statues. So today, I want to close with these few words. Whatever you have as an idol before you in worship, it's time for you to stop worshiping it. Only true worship belongs to God. Satan realized those idols did not make sense because when you worship them, you are, you, are, you, are, you are sending worship to him. So can we change our method of who we worship? Can we change our worship from worshiping idols to worship Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior and the Trinity and Godhead? I will be so glad if you who are worshiping an idol And we would have tell you there are a lot of idols that are set up. And they are not afraid to worship their Buddha, or worship their ten hand gods, or hundred hand gods, or worship Sai Baba, or worship whatever you have as a god. As long as you worship that, you discredit yourself and discredit God. We want to change that today. Father, today, 
every person who worship idols. I condemn it, I destroy it, I call it null and void. I mash up every idol, every statues that are placed in our lands in, 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 with subtleness in different places in our island whether it's in Trinidad and Tobago. We pull down those idols that demons are hiding behind. So when they throw their food and throw their wine and throw their water and saying we worship you idol, they are worshiping demons and demons like no better thing than that. Demons are saying you don't know who you worship, you worship me demons. And then with that Satan gets the glory. So today Father we pull down every idol, east, west, north, south. Every idol that represents demons or Satan or the devil. We call it null and void. We mash them up. We mash them up. We pull them down. We declare the blood of Jesus over every idol. We dismantle their works in the name of Jesus. And I pray for the people who are in bondage with us by oppression, depression, or possession. Loose them in Jesus' name. I thank you for loosing them and for setting these people free. Father, in our high office, the Prime Minister, the President, in our Chief Secretary office, in all parliamentarian offices, whether it's been placed there by a man or woman, or they themselves placed there, we command it to be broken. And we declare Jesus' blood over Trinidad and Tobago. We replace it, every idol, every false worship, with worship of God Almighty, the Trinity, and the Godhead. We declare that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us, it shall be condemned. So mighty God, I pray for your peace over our land of Trinidad and Tobago. And especially our blessed land of Tobago who now take on our House of Assembly election. Lord, I pray for Mr. Kelvin Charles and his entire team that works with him. That you will continue to give him wisdom, knowledge and understanding ten times wiser than his colleagues. God, I know that he will have his challenges but through his challenges, because he fight under the, 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 the pastor's rod, the shepherd rod. May you remind him that leading is a responsibility. May you remind him that when he lead under the shepherd rod, he have to go your way and don't compromise. Please, Almighty God, speak to his heart. Speak to his heart, Almighty God. And let the peace of God rest over him. I pray for all of his men that are under him. That they will not learn to backbite or use any means of backbiting. But they will work together because it's a job. It's not who. It's better than who. It's a job. And what you are called to do, you must do it with the spirit of simplicity. I pray for Mr. Juke, who is the opposition. That there will be no means of how he said he come to give. He come to give them fire, and pressure, that he will do rightfully what he's supposed to do, but with a spirit of humility and love and appreciation. Pray for our Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley, who has the burden of leading Trinidad and Tobago with all of his ministers. I pray that you, God, will direct their steps in everything they do. I pray, O oh God, that you will minister to us, the body of Christ, that we will carry our mandate. We are not in the office as these people are, but we hold a higher office. We are sons of God. May you continue, Lord, to open up our understanding that we will see a spirit of discernment 
and the spirit of wisdom to flow in this whole holistic situation. Thank you for doing it, God. Thank you for doing it, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Today again, this is Bishop Basil Edwards. Of course, I didn't feel the way I feel because I felt as though in my stomach something is not too right. But the long and short of it, I thank you for listening. I thank you for being my friend. May you continue to support us on the church and the rock and this program standing on the rock. I want to say to you, may the Lord bless you and continue to strengthen you. I say that our service on the Sunday half 10 till on a Tuesday Bible study and um, we have prayer meeting and then on Friday is one of the most important times for our life is where we have that deliverance service somewhere in the Boko area not too long from now we'll be having Pastor Paul and his team who will be, who will be functioning in that area and our greatest support to him, his wife and the, well, the whole body of Christ and the church on the rock as we continue to do what God calls us to do. So the Lord bless you. Shalom. The peace of God rest upon you. Amen and amen. I see.